Hey folks, Jonathan here. Getting ready to drop this engine down. I'm going to pull the, the uh, I'm going to take torque converter bolts out first, of course, and then we're going to pull the transmission off. And we're going to end up pulling, I'm going to drain the oil, and we're going to pull the pan. And I want to look and see if this engine has stock crank, stock pistons or not. I'm guessing it probably does. I mean, it, it sounds pretty mean, but you know, the more I look at it, the more I wonder. Uh, you know, like I said, you hear stories about stuff, and then, uh, you know, you don't really ever know until you really get into it. But I, all I do know for sure is this is a 1972 model block with 1970 model heads. And they are the truck heads, so that kind of worries me. But what we're going to do, we're going to find out what it is. And either way, we're going to use it. We're going to put it in it. Uh, we're going to run it with, you know, what's there. Now, you know, later on I may do something, uh, the new, uh, you can get a new set of aluminum heads now that are, I think they're made in Australia for about $900, and we may do something later with it, but for now we're not changing a thing on it, we're going to leave, you know, leave it how it is and, uh, you know, clean it up, paint it a little bit, and uh, seal it up a little better, and uh, like I said, I'm wind up putting a new pan gasket on it, but went ahead and Pulled the transmission off. I want to show everybody what a Vega torque converter looks like. It's a 10 inch converter, but you see it's got a heat shield around it. Or, well, I don't think it's a heat shield. I think it's actually a shield to bring the cool air in. Uh, I believe that's what it is. But anyway, that's how you can spot a Vega converter real quick. And uh, they're good for somewhere between 28 and 3200 uh, RPM uh, stall. And that just means it don't take off until it starts hitting a higher RPM. That way you get your torque and your horsepower up. And we're draining the oil right now, getting ready to take the pan off. And just wanted to tell you a couple things uh, while I'm sitting here waiting. Uh, appreciate all the comments and everything. And, and I had a few people comment about the, uh, you know, that they appreciate the way I, I explain things and stuff. And, and you know, I... I wanted to tell everybody a little story about something that happened when I was young that uh, sort of is one of the reasons I try to explain stuff as if I'm working with somebody that had never done it before and you know is just unfamiliar with what I'm doing and and what it is is uh, somewhere around 10 years old I guess I was playing recreational football and the thing is is you know of course the coaches at rec football had kids that on the team that played football, you know, that was always the way it went. You know, the coach always had their, their kids out there. I'm sure that he raised, or they raised their kids up to, uh, to know about football and know the rules, know the game, know what to do, and all that good stuff. And here's the problem. They assumed that everybody knew that. And when you started, they didn't start at the basics. They didn't start teaching you how to play the game without uh, assuming that you already knew how to play the game. So, you know, I just knew that I was on, you know, the defensive line and, and you know, when somebody come through, you tried to stop them. Any more than that, I really didn't know and had no idea. And I don't even think I knew what a touchdown was. I mean, I, I had never watched football or been around anybody that, uh, you know, played football or anything like that. So I just didn't know about it. And one of the coaches, I guess he was getting kind of aggravated, not with just me, with a lot of the other people on the team. And the thing about it is, is I'm guessing that a lot of the other people was probably the same way, was like me and didn't know. And uh, didn't know, you know, the the, the true meaning of, of what to do. And anyway, what, uh, what happened was, is the coach actually offered a quarter to the first person that would sack the quarterback. Well, I didn't know what the quarterback was, one with the ball. So, you know, the next play, I broke through the line and, you know, took him down. And, you know, I, he, he didn't even realize that that was the issue, is that we didn't know what to do. And, you know, I didn't think much about it until later on in life when I thought about, you know, the winning the quarter and, and the reason I'd done it and, you know, if he would have just said, look, you know, this is the object of the game and this is what you need to do and this is what, you know, you know, you're an end and this is your job, this is what, you know, I want you to do, it would have been so much nicer. I think we'd have had such a better team. The problem was is, uh, 
you know, you can't just send somebody out there and expect them to know what to do. And just because your kids have watched football, played football, and knew football, don't mean that all of them do. So I, I try to remember that. You know, it was a good life lesson for me to to figure out that, uh, you know, you're, you're working with, with, you know, all sorts of people from, from all different backgrounds and, and all different knowledges, you know. Uh, there's plenty of people out here that know more than I know, and I try to listen as much as I can. But, you know, if you walk into a conversation with, uh, you know, two, uh, let's say, electrical engineers, and they're talking about, uh, you know, three-phase power and, you know, megahertz and stuff that you don't have any clue about, you're not going to know anything about it. Now, if they started at the beginning, it's a little bit different, you know. But that's the problem. You never get started at the beginning. And that's what I try to do on these videos and I mean I you know I hope it helps somebody out I mean that's the the point of doing it you know that's what we we started out any you know to do the, from the beginning so all right I wanted to show you something else on this engine that I noticed walking around uh, this has got small flywheel 153 teeth uh, and that was probably because they got the gear reduction starter on it uh, of course this mark truck in there like all the big block truck motors uh, if it, if this was a car engine or even an engine out of a one-ton truck that had three piston rings, it would say PASS car, which stands for passenger car. And even the 454s that are in the one-ton trucks, as long as they're not a tall deck, you know, a lot of them are marked passenger car. Okay, one thing I noticed, pilot bushing. And this makes me believe that this engine was in something else that had a stick shift transmission. I know you're saying, well, it was probably in a big truck, but here's the deal. I've never seen one of the truck motors that didn't have the adapter from the factory to go to the bigger transmissions. Uh, what, they did, what they did is they ran a, a thin adapter that went here, went with a bigger bell housing. That way they could go with a 13-inch clutch and clear it. And the pilot bushing was not a bushing. It was a bearing, and it was actually in the flywheel. And so I would say that that was put in after this engine was you know converted by somebody into a for a vehicle instead of a big truck and uh and for anybody that didn't get to see it there is my bushing i made let's see if i can get the light right here uh to adjust anyway there's my bushing i made for the distributor you can see it's all the way up to the edge of the the top but it clears good everything works good so we're good to go with it so anyway if this oil's drained out enough we're gonna get this pan off and I'm guessing uh, bone stock with stock four ring pistons. But I could be wrong, but that's my guess. Uh, we'll get the casting number off the crank and we'll find out for sure what crank's in it and make sure it's not been, you know, offset ground, which I'm sure it hasn't. Uh, I don't think anybody had done any, uh, any major building on this thing. So we'll find out here in a minute. All right. Okay, so far I'm not seeing anything to make me think that this engine was built. Now, maybe rebuilt, but not built. A uh, couple things. I see no notching on the edge of the, the block, so there was no clearance work done. Uh, stock rods, you know, it is four bolt main, of course. Uh, let me see. You can see the caps have been marked. See the 7-7. Seven, seven. So they've done that, you know. That's not a factory deal. Somebody's done that. And uh, I measured the bore the best I could with just a tape measure. And the bore is somewhere around four and three eighths is what I, what it looks like. I'm going to go ahead and turn it and try to get the casting numbers off. And we'll go from there. But, you know, so far nothing special. I really can't tell on the pistons. Uh... They're not anything really short, so it don't have any long rods or long stroke or anything like that in it. So we'll get the casting number off and see. I'm going to bet that's original crank and uh, probably machine shop probably just rebuilt it, but you know maybe a different set of pistons and stuff in it. I don't know if I can get any numbers off of them, but we'll try. But uh, but that's not a big deal. Uh, it does have a double roller timing chain, which is you know pretty common. Somebody done a crappy job. Well, I guess that's made that way. I don't like to see a lot of Permatex on a gasket because uh, I pulled too many apart and found most of the uh, Permatex in the damn pickup screen. And that's never a good thing. And this thing had a, 
a lot on it. I'll show you. A lot of Permatex holding it on. I guess they just probably put it on the bottom side, but, but what you run into is, as you can see, all this on the inside, you know, it cramps it, and then this falls off and gets in the pan and it gets sucked up into the, the pickup. So that's definitely an issue. All right, I'll find out what crank this is and show you more. Okay, folks, this is sort of like playing Mythbusters here. And, uh, you know, the, the stories about this engine is uh, basically busted because we've got a stock crank, we've got stock rods, and I think it may, you know, the, I think the story on this engine is going to be the real story is that the guy probably took it to South Carolina, like they were saying, in a machine shop. Probably bored it, put a new set of aluminum pistons in it. They are not uh, forged, they are cast pistons. Uh, looks like it's bored over some. You know, it's hard to get a measurement, but it's definitely bored a little bit. And they probably freshened the engine up and, you know, maybe turned the crank or whatever. But this is a stock stroke crank. And, you know, it's, a, you know, it's, it's bad because you'd love to have something that's, you know, built like of course they claimed it was built but it's good because we're going to be able to see what you know this engine will do in that car and uh maybe later on if we don't scatter it we can pull it out and then uh maybe go with four and a half inch crank shorter rods uh bore it maybe a little bigger if it ain't too far already and you know buy that set of aluminum heads and just do some playing with it and see what we can really do with it okay folks we got our engine plate or motor plate whatever you want to call it mounted on the front you can see the water pump mounts to the plate so we're moving a water pump out a quarter inch so we'll have to make a piece for this to bring it out a quarter inch and so the pulleys will line up now we're only running an alternator we're not running any power steering or anything like that so uh, not a big deal and We'll probably put a switch on the alternator to make it quit charging when we want it to. I mean, freeze up a little bit of horsepower, not much. Uh, anyway, whoever made these plates, and I don't think this is a factory setup. You can see somebody messed up a little bit with the end mill, but I mean, don't hurt anything. But whoever made them made a or did a really good job, and they fit right on. And you can see the rear one. It's a little bit rusty. We got to get it cleaned up, but surface rust, but. Done a really good job. So now we can do away with uh, our side motor mounts. We don't need them. You know, it gives you more clearance for headers when you're coming down, but uh, we're gonna come out anyway and come into a single and probably come out right in, right behind the wheels with just single exhaust, single, uh, you know, four inch pipe and not really run it anywhere because we're not worried about the noise. And let me see. I'm kinda, you know, the more I think about it, I'm kinda glad it's stock. You know, everything basically stock in the engine, uh, probably besides the cam, but uh, that gives us a good baseline. I mean, that way, if somebody's doing this, then they'll, they'll know what, you know, what you do if you take a light car and, you know, even a stock 427 and truck motor and just see what happens. And these engines are still out there. I mean, a lot of two-ton trucks around that you can buy cheap. I just seen one on... Uh, on Craigslist that I was kind of, I kind of liked it. It was $1,700 for it. Uh, C50 flatbed or C60, I think, flatbed. And uh, in really good shape. But I was tempted to get it. I picked up a bed the other day, uh, a uh, stepside long bed for a square body Chevrolet. And that was the body style. And I, I was tempted to get it, shorten it up, and put the bed on it. But I've got too much other stuff going on. And... Uh, Anyway, like I said, you can you can pick these engines up, even the 366s. I mean, you could see what it was, how that 366 done in our 62 Willys Rat Rod. You know it, you know it had plenty of power to spare, and we can get the transmission mounted on here, and then we'll be able to uh, start, you know, doing some test fitting on the engine. Now, another thing too, you know, this don't stay like this. Uh, you know, we got to cut out for the alternator bracket you know to get it bolted back on uh, this will all be changed you know you just design it and build it how you want basically you're coming up off your your frame of your car with uh, two pieces of angle is fine and then uh, just drill three or four holes in it bolted on each side same way with the back 
Uh, you know, basically you can just set it down in there and bolt it. And you know, it's best to try to keep your you know your angle coming off your frame on the back side. That way, if you go to pull the engine out, you can unbolt it, set it right out. It's really quick. Uh, you know, shouldn't be a problem. And we'll just design it however we want to design it as we go. All right, transmission is on. Ready to go. I think we can uh, work with this now. Figure out how we're going to mount it and all that good stuff. So, I hadn't taken the motor or the old motor mounts off yet. I'm getting ready to take them off. But besides that, I think we're pretty good. I've done some looking on the rear. Uh, kind of worried about cutting into that. Uh, I mean, it'd be no problem to cut this, knock this off, chuck this, you know, cut the axle off, chuck it in the lathe, and turn it down. But I may go ahead and uh, take them loose from here. These are plug welded and pressed in really hard. But I think if I cut the plug welds, put some heat on it, and actually use a bottle jack inside without hitting any critical parts, I can probably jack that out of there. And if not, you can weld lines down the inside of that tube, you know, to shrink it up to get it out like we used to do uh, tractor sleeves. And we may do that and cut it off, clean the axle where we want it. And then probably freeze this, heat this, put them back together. A lot of times you can heat it by itself, but I mean, we can freeze it too. Uh, you know, it's gonna be short, so we can throw it in the freezer or pick up some dry ice or, or waste some propane. I don't think that's very environmentally friendly, but uh, you know, you can run, run a good stream of propane even through a regulator and freeze something pretty good. But anyway, we'll figure that out. Uh, that's not a, big issue right now you know more issue is trying to get this front end finished up get this engine down where we want it and uh, you know decide how we're gonna do it and go with it from there and uh, anyway it'll come along pretty quick here we start uh, throwing the big parts on and you know get the front finished and all that so just hang with me but I uh, appreciate everybody watching and uh, till next time bye